Hello everyone, and welcome to the finale of Let's Play Persona Q. Off screen, I did some preparations for this final battle. Our main character is level 78, and almost everyone else is level 69. We did this, well, to speed up this process. You want your main character to be as high level as possible, and I did this by having the heavy armor, heavy sword, and heavy wristband on him to accelerate his growth immensely. And we're probably gonna be taking those off since, you know, probably not good for the final encounter. Next, after that, I gathered a lot of personas. We have Mahakala with Power Charge, Dance Macabre, and Lethargy Circle. An extremely menacing persona, and I highly recommend you get him. Next up, we have Odin with a Runic Shield and Panta Ray, a fantastic win persona, and he's pretty good at blocking elemental attacks. Next up, we got Yoshitsune with First Star, Heroic Gemini, Shura Tensei, and Hasa Tobai, which is basically Igus' best persona possible. Up next, we have Loki and Satan, who are good. They have elemental attacks, but mostly we're going to be focusing on our physical attackers here. But Loki and Satan, respectively, do have pretty good attacks and pretty good amounts of SP to give to our characters, so hey, they're pretty good too. Next up, I highly recommend you gather bombs of life. They're going to be extremely important in this battle, so just make sure you have tons of healing items and all other sorts of things you may think you will need. Most notably, bombs of life. The strategy that I'm going to be using does not require a bomb of life, but if you're playing the game normally, I cannot stress it enough. Get that reviving item. Anyways, back here to the ninth floor of the clock tower. In the previous episode, we reached the summit, but we're not prepared to go to the very top. And well, now we are. So let's get ready to save Rey from this evil tower. There it is. I'm getting a strong reading. It's powerful, so be careful. Raychan is inside that shadow. Hey, Raychan! Raysan, please answer us. Wake up! It's no use. Raychan's reading is still weak. Then we have to hurry and defeat it. Enough talk. Come at us. Ray will save you. Not with my power alone, but with everyone's. Through all of our strengths combined, we'll save you. Please, you have to save Rachel. Yes, let's. Indeed, let's go! This is the first battle with the Captor Spider. Our main strategy going into this is we're going to buff up our two physical attackers, Akihiko and Igus, as much as physically possible, then decrease the agility of the Captor Spider so he can not dodge their physical attacks, and basically everyone else just chills out till phase two. So debilitate coming out, and then we're going to Heat Riser Akihiko, and then we're going to Heat Riser Igus the next turn to make sure that they are just as strong as as possible. We're gonna increase our agility and our aim. All right, Heat Riser going on Igus. All right, charge shot will come through, and we will dodge it. You have to be careful of that though. If you cannot dodge that attack, it is gonna do a ton of damage, not only to your front line but also your back line. Igus is gonna, Igus is gonna charge up, and things are looking good so far. Let's keep it up. I guess we can just use Thunder Smash and House Satobe the next turn from Yoshitsune. Um, I guess now, so the best thing for her to do would be just to conserve her SP. I guess we can just keep a debilitate going on the capture spider. Doesn't cost that much SP, but... Now we're gonna use Dots Macabre, and let's see how much damage this can do! A little bit stronger than Myriad Arrows, and we didn't even have to use Shura Tensei. Yeah, 
That attack is extremely powerful. Thunder Smash coming from Odin, doing 305. Not bad either. Another charge shot coming from the spider. And we dodged it again. Nice. So let's see, maybe we can get charged up on Igus, maybe? Yoshitsune's Hasatobe attack is extremely powerful. One of the most powerful attacks in all of Persona. And yes, alright, we made it to phase two already. That's what I like to see. Now, the Captor Spider will retreat and try and protect itself with its legs. There's a Fire Element leg, an Ice Element leg, an Electric Element leg, and lastly, a Wind one. The Fire one is weak to Ice, the Ice one is weak to Fire, the Electric one is weak to Wind, and the Wind one is weak to Electricity. We're going to be using all of our elements here to get charged up as quickly as possible and get into the boost state if we get everyone into the boost state which is possible just a little hard to do we'll do an all-out attack and knock these things out 100 percent niflheim coming from nalato that's gonna do a giant amount of damage and she's also gonna get boosted so we can use a meki dolo on the next turn ponta ray coming from yunara kami and all right looks like everyone is charged up so far the only character that does not have an elemental attack is igus which we're just gonna let her use Hasatobe, because it will still do a lot of damage. These legs do not resist physical attacks, as far as I can tell. Moragi Dan is gonna get blocked by the Igus shield, and the only one to get hit by it will be our Persona 3 protagonist. I guess we'll also eat a hit, but it's not gonna do a lot! We can go for an all-out attack anyways! Let's do it! Oh man, this is gonna do so much almighty damage! These legs will be down in a matter of seconds. Oh my gosh, our team is amazing. So far, none of the legs have been destroyed, but that is alright. They're a little low, a little low. Maybe just some physical attacks. This Meggy Dolone. I guess we can use Black Viper on the one that has the most HP. Black Viper is just a pretty decent almighty skill. It's single target. It's not going to do a ton, and alright. Doing okay damage, but nothing too crazy. This Meggy Dolone, though, from Yamato Takeru should do a ton. Alright, 300 damage across the board. Not bad. See how much Ponta Ray can do. It will splash to the other. Nice! It would do some splash damage, but unfortunately it's next to the green leg and won't do as much damage. So let's try and use a Black Viper in that one to even things out a little bit. You do not have to knock out all the legs at the same time. They do not come back. So don't worry about that. Man, Haya Shield and Runic Shield is such, just such a good combo. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. Speaking of Aegis, let's use Hasatobe. Yes, that is a ton of damage. Unfortunately, when you defeat the legs, they can still hit that same target, which is kind of a bummer, but hey, that's alright. It's still an extremely powerful move. We got one leg to go. So let's just continue to buff up. Uh, I guess we can just use some physical attacks. It'd be a little bit on the overkill side, but hey, that's alright. Uh, yeah, just use Medea Haran to heal up. Why not? Now, Dance Macabre is probably going to... Yeah, end it before I guess even gets to it, but that's fine. Once all four legs have been defeated, the captured spider will fall to the ground and let's attack its head once more. This is where we're going to finish the fight. Basically, just goes back to the other stage again. So we just want to finish him off while we can, while he's still on the ground. He will stay stunned for a couple of turns, but not forever. And heck yeah, Heroic Gemini coming through. Heroic Gemini has a 25% chance to mimic the last move that your character used. It is a very low chance, but it is a very high chance. At no cost, too. A fantastic skill to get on your characters. Oh my gosh. This is turning out very nicely. Capture Spider has like 25% left. So you want? Let's just keep doing what we're doing. Launch our physical attacks. And see what happens. Uh... I guess we can use a Boofy Dine attack. Loki does have, you know, ice boosts and stuff like that, so he'll probably do a decent amount. Dance Macabre coming through. Doing almost a thousand damage in one attack. That is seriously insane. These two personas just completely break this battle. If you're having a hard time, just summon these guys up and you. Sh Another heroic Gemini! Oh my gosh! What are the chances? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I don't know how much uh, fight the Capture Spider has left in him, but it seems like it's almost over. Loki coming in with his ice attack, doing 250, and yep, that'll be it. We defeated the giant spider that took Rey, and now she's been set free.
Ray! Ray, are you all right? Zen? Thank goodness! Are you okay? Can you walk? No. You can't? Here, take my hand! Run... Please... Run... Huh? Be careful! Something's coming! personification of my power as Kronos, an unfeeling god that only obeys its duty and reaps what time is left. This was me before I met Rey. It will be powerful, tremendously so. We have no intention of backing down after coming this far. Sorry, but I don't pray to no gods. The phrase, giving up, is not in my internal dictionary. I hate to break it to you, dude, but we've got power, too. This'll be a breeze for us. Yeah, I'll never back down. I'll fight, for everyone's sake. Me, too. I'm here because everyone else is with me. That's why I'm gonna fight. Everyone. Yes. Hmm. I'm weak. But that weakness has taught me much. That I've been running away. That it's my companions who support me. The feelings I believe in. And what I wish to protect. Our enemy now is the me that used to run away. I will defeat myself. You who were once part of me. Return to me. Otherwise. You shall return to the embrace of eternity. It's coming! Please, save Rajon! Philae, forgive me. For I was not able to save you back then. And forgive me for saving you now. Let's go! This will surely be the final battle. Yeah. That's our goal! So this is the Clockwork God! An extremely difficult battle of unprepared. Luckily for us, our team is more than qualified to take this guy down. First things first, debilitate. You definitely want to get that going. And Alright. Same as before, Akihiko and Aegis are gonna be just our main damage dealers here in this battle. So it is pivotal that you keep them alive as long as possible. Power charge coming out. And alright, the gears of time are going to start to turn. Ugh, this ain't good. What was that? Th there's a counter of some kind on leader, too! That's the gear of life. It counts down and claims your life when it reaches zero. What? There's no way to remove it? Revival skills or items can prolong the counter. But it cannot be completely removed until it claims you. We need to watch those counters then, not just your health. He governs death and time. Be careful. 
So, Kronos has put the Gears of Time effect on us. This boss fight basically has a time limit. <laughs> but it will matter not. We're going to use the same strategy as before, and on our off turns, we're going to use Revival Beads to prolong the lowest death clocks on our characters. Now, the worst possible scenario is that everyone dies on the same turn. But, luckily, he will make some of the clocks end at different times, which can be very helpful. So just keep spamming your Revival Beads, or if at all possible you have some of Recarm. That will help out a lot to bring your characters back to life. Unfortunately, they will lose their buffs. But in all honesty, if you can debuff this opponent, you should be fine. It's extremely easy to dodge his attacks, and well, he actually takes a ton of damage from physical attacks too, so make sure you use some of those. And yeah, I'm not really afraid of that attack. <laughs> the time. So once you have heard that dialogue exchange, the Clockwork God is going to get access to new attacks. He already used Agidine, Garudine, Bufudine, and Zeodine before, but now he's going to put some physical attacks into the blend and make it even harder for you to defeat him. Luckily, we have an extremely high chance of dodging. We also have the Runic Shield and Aegis Shield, so we're protected from those. So honestly, just go all out. Keep power charging, keep using your multi-targeting physical attacks. And you should be all right. So we got revival beads for days. Let's just keep using those on our most important party members. And all right, things are looking good so far. <sighs> okay. He does have another attack, which I'm not sure if he's going to use, but he will basically accelerate your death clocks. And if that happens, well, you're, you're kind of out of luck, and you're going to lose a party member, which honestly, at this point, cannot be avoided. Just think of it like an instant death attack, and plan accordingly can happen at any time. Unfortunately, our front row is very low on their clocks, which is not looking good at all, but hopefully this next string of Dance Macabre and Hasatobe will be enough. Alright, our HP is looking fine, but mm -hmm. yeah, I guess I'll use Black Viper here. Black Viper will not do a ton of damage, but it is almighty. So, I mean, it's not going to be resisted. As far as I know, the Clockwork God does not have any weakness during any part of this boss fight. So physical attacks are your best bet because they take up not really much SP and they're rather low maintenance comparative to magical attacks. Now yeah, let's just get rid of that debuff and use another Hasatobe. Oh my gosh. That's so much damage. Oh man. I don't think he has much left in him. And Oh crud, there it is. Time warp. Which will lower the death clocks quite a bit for I guess, which is... Unfortunate. Impossible to continue fighting. I am close. Retreating. I was born from man and have become a good man of his children. You wandered and abandoned the dream. Your presence is forging on a tongue of the mighty power. What is your life? What is your life? Reachon and Zenkun are one of us! This has been strange, but good. I found new comrades, and that's what's given me strength. The connections we make give us strength, and we forged new bonds in this strange world. We've also changed by coming to this world. That is why we stand here, and that is why we will fight you. Kronos. Do you understand what you were lacking? I didn't have it until now either. The power in a fleeting life. The beauty it holds. 
Lucy. They have taught me much. And so, I am here to defeat you and negate myself. I will save Ray. That is the duty I have undertaken. Of my own will. Once Zen has said that, the battle is almost over. Just lay the finishing blows on the clockwork god, and you will have beaten Persona Q. So come on guys, just a little more, and then we can all go home. Oh. Persona! <laughs> I'm sorry. Your duties have come to an end. You must return from whence you came. Come. for your life. No one has such a reason. You existed. You lived. That's all that matters. There is only one of you. Since man was born, and forevermore afterward, the girl before me now will be the only ray in existence. You are no one else. Everything you do, only you could have done. But I... Didn't the people around you change a bit because you were there? In your life, there were those who found joy and sorrow in your words. I'm certain that you changed someone in that way. You gave someone life, and I'm certain that they changed you in turn. Your mother, nurses, friends, whether you intended it or not, they were changed. They gave you life. Even if you disappear, the world you were from goes on. But that world is the one you lived in. Even if only a little, it changed because you lived in it. You were there as a small cog in that world. A person's life isn't defined by grand accomplishments. You lived. Does that itself not give meaning to your life? I didn't know you when you were alive, but I can tell by watching you now that you live to the last. <sighs> Thank you. I think I just wanted someone to say that to me. You did live, Ray. Mm-hmm. Thank you. To think that all you wished for was to hear these words. I made you suffer. For so long, 
I'm so sorry. Then, I'm happy. I lived my life. I lived it to the fullest. Thank you for waiting for me, Zen. I'll go with you. Yes.